All right, so welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to show you how you can design your own gears in Fusion 360. Since I've done this Raptor 2 RC project, I've had this come up so many times on Instagram and in emails, people just asking me, please make a tutorial on how to create gears. So this is that tutorial. I think that you'll be relatively pleased to know it's not actually that difficult because we're not going to do it from scratch. What we're actually going to do is use a script that has been pre-programmed to generate these gears really easily. So the script that you're going to need is called GF Gear Generator. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description below. You'll need to go onto this website. You'll have to sign in to your Autodesk account on the Autodesk App Store. And you want to hit this download button here. It's completely free and it's awesome. So hit the download button, you'll see that download, and you'll see it in your downloads file as GF Gear Generator Windows 64. What you want to do first is make sure that you close down Fusion 360 if you've already got it open. You want to install this package, let it run all the way through, relaunch Fusion 360, and then come back to this video. Once you've installed everything and relaunched Fusion 360, you'll be greeted with a screen like this. So what you want to do is come up to the Tools tab, come to add-ins, click the little drop down and click scripts and add-ins. This will bring up a little window like this and you'll probably see a bunch of different things in here and if you scroll down a little bit you'll see there's actually a script already in there called spur gear. That's another script that you can use to play around with gears. Personally I think it's okay but it's not as good as the one I'm going to show you now. Come to the add-ins tab and you can see we've got my add-ins. I've got quite a few in here that I've used previously you can see one of them is GF Gear Generator. And if you installed everything, you should see that in there. If for some reason that doesn't work, notice there's a little plus button here that you can click. And what that'll do is it'll ask you for the path of the installation of GF Gear Generator. So you just have to find out wherever you installed it to, set that folder here as the path, and click OK. Once you see GF Gear Generator in here, you just want to click it and click on Run. And what you'll notice is that now on your tools toolbar at the top, you'll see GF gear generator here. And you'll see this little gear icon. If we click on the little drop down here, you can see that we've got a bunch of different options in here. We can create spur gears, double helical gears, 90 degree bevel gears, straight gear rack, worm gears, pretty much everything you'd need for any kind of project. So what I'm gonna show you for this tutorial is this double helical gear. So I'm gonna click that. And notice it brings up this little toolbar here on the right. Now what I'll say here is I'm definitely no expert on gears, I'm not a mechanical engineer, but I do know how to use this tool for my simple projects like my RC cars. If you're creating gears, the main thing you want to keep in mind is that for them to be compatible, this module parameter has to be the same. So module is basically uh, a unit measurement for how big or how small your gears are. If you're designing really small gears for some little contraption, you'll want the module to be quite small. But if you're designing massive gears for some large mechanical unit, you'll want the module to be quite big. So you can play around with it. I'm just going to set the module to one millimeter for this video, which is going to result in quite a big gear. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is the number of teeth. So this will depend on your gear ratio, for example. So let's say I want to do a five to one gear ratio. I'm going to go with, for the large gear, I'm going to create a gear with 50 teeth. So I'm just going to enter 50 in there. You can also specify the height of the gear, so that's going to be the thickness of it. And again, that's just a parameter that's dependent on whatever you're trying to create. I'm going to set this to 20, just for this little project. Pressure angle and helix angle. This has a lot to do with the efficiency of gears. There are a few nice graphs out there that I might put up on the screen that show you the, the changes in efficiency as you change the pressure angle. I'm just going to leave this at default for now, but I recommend you do a little bit of research into that if you're keen to get kind of the maximum efficiency out of your gears. I'm also going to do a double helical gear, so I'm going to check this little box here and hit OK. And before you actually hit OK, remember what you've chosen here because they're going to need to be compatible when, you, when we design the next gear. So remember we've got a module of 1mm, 50 teeth, and a gear height of 20mm. So we're just going to hit OK. And what this will do is it will generate that gear for us. So once it's finished processing, you can see we end up with a gear that looks something like this. And just to show you an example of that helix angle, if I go back up to the gear generator and I create double helical gear again, remember we want these to be compatible with one another. So you always want to do uh, 
um, module that was the same as before. I'm going to go for 50 teeth again. I'm going to set the gear height to be 20. And now this time I'm going to use a helix angle of 40 degrees, which is I believe what I used for the Raptor 2 car. And you'll see this straight away. So I'm going to hit OK. And watch the difference between the two gears. As you can see there, after generating the same gear, just with a different helix angle, you can see what the difference is. This is what I use for Raptor 2. It was either 35 or 40 degrees, and it works really, really well. And one thing you want to consider as well is if you're planning to 3D print these double helical gears, keep in mind that you probably want to print it in this orientation. So make sure that your printer can print at those incrementing angles, and you don't want to print too steep or you'll mess your printer. So just to kind of show you the counterpart to this gear then, I'm going to create another one. So I'm going to go to double helical gear. We want to click double helical because that's what we're using. We select a module of one millimeter, which is again, really important that the module for your gears is the same, otherwise they won't be compatible. The number of teeth this time, I'm going to go for 10. I'm going to set the gear height to be 20. And remember, helix angle also has to be the same. So I'm going to go for 40 and hit OK. So notice what we've got here now is this little pinion gear. So what I like to do is whenever you use the script, it'll generate a body. So I like to right click on the body, create components from bodies, and then they're a lot easier to move around and manipulate and create joints with and that kind of thing. So what we've essentially got here now is a 5 to 1 gear ratio, exactly like I've got on the Raptor car. So for every five rotations of this pinion gear, we get one rotation of this large gear. So if I actually move this across a little bit, it'll kind of make it look a little bit better. So if I select the component, uh, I just want to come up to solid. We want to move. We can drag it towards this. It's also important to note that your gear meshing is actually correct. So you can see this one is the opposite way around. So if we select the component, and I want to rotate this now 180 degrees. Hit OK, capture position. You can see now it's correct. So as the pinion gear spins, it's going to mesh into that larger gear and rotate it. So that's basically the basics of it, and it's not much more difficult than that. You know, other types of gears are the same, you're going to have slightly different parameters. A few people ask me as well, how do you do the gear reduction and how do you create the shafts? And it's as simple as you usually model. So, you know, you go and create a sketch, you want to select your component in this case. Let's select component two. If I want to sketch something on the side, just as an example, I'll show you um, some weight reduction in gears. If I grab the line tool, I'm just going to create a construction line on here. I'm going to create a center diameter circle. Let's make that say six mil. And we'll have a distance here of uh, 15 millimeters, just for an example. And now if I just go and finish, I can grab the extrude tool straight through, hit OK. And now if you wanted to create a pattern, you can just do create, circle a pattern, select your axis, which is obviously the center axis, and define your number of, of holes. So if we go for 10, this might be a bit too big, but let's click OK. And there we go. So there's your weight reduction gear. And it's really as simple as that, you know? And again, if you want to create a shaft on there as well, just create another circle in the middle. So we'll make that 10 millimeters. And now if we just extrude as we normally would, we can set this to 15 mil. We'll do it again on the other side. So we'll flip it around, start from object. We'll do minus 15 mil, hit okay. And there we go. That's basically it. That's essentially what I've done for Raptor 2. Obviously I put a lot more time and, and effort into and thought into what I'm doing with the Raptor 2. But you get the idea. It's, it's that easy to, to create a pair of gears and, and just start playing around. You know, if you just want to experiment with 3D printing this kind of stuff, this is a real playground, you know, you can just do whatever you want. I think what this has also emphasized is just the power of those scripts and how useful they are. A lot of people don't know that the scripts exist and that you can actually use them. And what it means is that you don't have to start everything from scratch. Most of the time there's already a tool out there that does what you want to do. And I'll say that as well, you know, if, if you find yourself thinking, oh, I wish there was a tool that could do this, have a look on the Fusion 360 app store. Chances are there is already something there. A lot of the really good scripts are paid, so you obviously have to pay a fee for them. But if it's worth it to you, you know, if it's going to save you a lot of time, 
it might be worth doing that. So that's it for this one. I hope I've answered a lot of your questions and I hope you found it useful. If you did find it useful, please leave a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a lot. If you're a Fusion 360 beginner and you really want to learn, check out my Fusion 360 for beginners course. I'll leave a link in the description below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.